Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to my local university campus. We're sitting somewhere a little bit different today. I might um, show you around the grounds a little bit so you can see where I am. We've got an overcast day today. It is grey, it might rain at some point. I've got my little tweed jacket on here. I don't have the hat on, there's no sun today so you know I'm mixing it up a bit but um, before I get into this video I just wanted to spend a moment to thank all of you who come to this channel who watch these videos thank you for watching thank you for subscribing thank you if you've ever put a like or a dislike or a comment of any kind if you've been here and you've interacted on this channel thank you so much it's because of you who's watching you know that we've got such a great community here I absolutely love our comment section we've got such a wonderful comment section uh, and you know I wish I could sit and write back to each one of you I really do that would be just so much fun I used to do comments guys and that was a lot of fun but then at some point I decided I've got to stop doing comments now so that I can really concentrate on sessions on making videos on you know some of the other projects that I've got going on I made a tarot deck some of you know about that it's a Vedic astrology tarot deck uh, at the moment I'm looking at doing more work on my archetype series I will update you with what's happening there so stay tuned to the channel I'm always working on stuff I'm always creating things so um, know that you know if I had the time I would love to write back to each one of you if I could and I read all of your comments and I can just sort of sense the vibe from each of you what a cool group we've got here thank you for making this a wonderful community I just had to say that at the beginning because usually I do that at the very end of the video so all the Pisceans they get all the love which is good but like I always at the end of the video I say I should do this at the beginning I should give all the love at the beginning so yeah thank you so much guys for making this a really wonderful place to work you know this is my place of work and uh, you guys make it so wonderful and you inspire me you motivate me the comments are often very insightful you're often sharing something of your life or the astrology that's happening in your life and believe it or not that all feeds into the production of future videos so thank you uh, for everything that you do for this channel I really really appreciate it all right let's take a look at the astrology for january 2024 how are we starting this new year and by the way happy new year to everyone i hope you all had a great night or day or however you celebrate it i didn't do too much this time uh, last year i was in sydney last year and my friend invited me to she's got wonderful uh, balcony on the harbour and I was able to watch the fireworks from there so that was beautiful she invited me there again this year but I declined because I am very um, keenly doing my castor oil pack thing and I'm just loving it it is really really helping me so guys I'm gonna leave a link below if you missed it from last time's video don't worry I'll put the link in this time again and thank you to the person who reminded me I think I forgot to put it on last time's video but I'll put it on this time's video as well I'll put a slightly different one of Barbara O'Neill talking about the castor oil pack and what it can do for you I've now started putting one um, on my my neck area as well um, to help with the thyroid and it's uh, yeah I'm finding it's helpful it's helping my energy so the other thing I also wanted to share is that if you try some of these natural healing modalities and you find that they're not working um, because I've gone through that I, I have gone through you know I've tried homeopathy and it doesn't work and I've tried this and that and all these natural things and it doesn't work but in the last few years I'm finding that all of these things are working for me so know that it could be a timing thing it could be and sometimes we can see it as per the Mahadasha setup you can actually see uh, that something you know might be a higher priority at a different time so in the la like so let's say several years before the last several years I was doing a lot of meditation a lot of other type of spiritual work and that was clearing the path 
so that other things would come up and then you know homeopathy has worked for me so I've gone through years of things like where you know a certain modality it just doesn't work at all but I found in the last few years anyway after all the spiritual work I've done more recently a lot of natural remedies are working and a lot of alternatives are working now because of all the other stuff that I did so I'm basically just saying hang in there and keep trying if it doesn't work maybe it's not the right time but um, the right time will happen and as I say you look at your Mahadasha setup and sometimes you can get a clue from there as to timings and, and when something might work and things like that anyway let's take a look at the astrology for January 2024 this really is a powerful month to make a major shift or transformation as I've said in the Parivartana exchange video now I think is it there or here where am I pointing I have to point somewhere and <laughs> basically in one of these locations um, I'll point to a link and you will be able to uh, watch my Parivartana exchange video so that's where I talk about Jupiter and Mars this month are going to be in a Parivartana exchange and you'll be able to and you'll be able to watch and see how that Parivartana exchange is going to benefit you but basically we've got great coach energy in the sky Jupiter and Mars when they are in some significant way connected to each other they can very often produce a great coach from if you look at someone's birth chart but we've got that energy in the sky so I'm going to say that you'll be able to coach yourself you'll be able to motivate yourself this month you'll be able to put in place some significant transformations uh, that could really make this year quite incredible it could be a time where you really get organized as well or you try to organize things better so that the year is going to be more efficient we're running an eight year a Saturn year this is about efficiency systems organization all that kind of thing as well so I've got here yeah we've got a personal coach in the sky to get you to become a new version of yourself definitely see more in my Parivartana exchange video so I'll link that for sure we've got all planets moving forward now so across January we're going to have at any given time four planets in fire signs it's a great way to light up the new year with some beautiful fire energy now some of you are going to be feeling this fiery energy you're going to be feeling fresh and ready to be creative you're going to be feeling that you want to make new things you want to change direction some of you might be tuned in more to Rahu's escapism energy that's a possibility um, or you could be tuned a bit more into Saturn's low and slow energy as well so see how this fits for you I know for me I'm feeling a bit of both I'm feeling the fiery energy a little bit I'm definitely feeling the creative energy but at the same time there is a bit of a slowness a bit of a slow undertone I can kind of feel both which is pretty interesting um, at this time but for some of you as I say some of you I know from the comments below some of you are just raring to go and you're like yes I want to create new things I'm ready let's go some of you are like I'm not quite ready yet and it could be that March might have the energy for you to really kickstart your year so we'll have a look at that as, as we progress um, in the coming weeks now news match up do I have any news to match up well right now I've got a little bit of live news we've got some rain happening all around me it's funny I put sunglasses in my bag but not an umbrella and on the way here I was thinking I really should have packed the umbrella shouldn't I anyway news match up we do have a little bit of news I watched a video as I was getting ready uh, today to do this this video the video was about Queen Margaret of Denmark abdicates and I thought oh that's quite interesting and I put it on in the background while I was getting ready for today and um, the news reader said now I'm pretty sure she's 83 so she's abdicating at 83 but what was really interesting what flagged my attention was the news reader said that Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark so that's her son who's going to take over he's 55 and now his son 
is 18. And that was incredible to hear because I was like, oh, that's perfect timing because these are maturation ages. So in astrology here, we've got our various maturation points from zero to 18, that's a chapter. 18 to 55, that's a chapter. 55 to 74, that's a chapter. So for example, if we were to advise Queen Margaret uh, about when is a good time to abdicate, well, definitely any time 74 onwards is perfectly suitable. I haven't checked her chart, by the way. From memory, I'm pretty sure she's got an exalted son in the 10th house. And I'm pretty sure that's quite similar to Princess Anne. Princess Anne has a bit of a similar thing going on. She's got son, I'm pretty sure, in the 10th house as well. And a lot of people have said that she would have made a good... Um, people say that Princess Anne is the king that Britain never had. And that's really interesting because, yeah, son in the 10th house is a beautiful leadership star it's just terrific so um, for people who have that you know that your destiny is that you're going to lead something you're going to be in charge of something you're going to run something um, but yeah Queen Margaret so if I was to look at her chart obviously I'd look at transits I'd look closer at her Mahadasha setup I'd look at all kinds of things but just on the basis that her son has turned 55 and his son has turned 18 just knowing that, we've got some astrological information right there that this is a perfect time to abdicate so that she can train her son or give him advice or help him in this new role. He's starting a brand new chapter of 18 years and his son is starting a brand new chapter too. And I think his son is going to inherit this um, crown prince title or something like that. So I guess he'd have things to learn there too. Uh, the other thing is that we've got Saturn, just generally we've got Saturn in Aquarius and this is a time where royal families are reforming themselves. They are doing things like slimming down their monarchies and modernizing them and you know making them more efficient. That makes perfect sense because Saturn is in Aquarius opposite the royal regal house of Leo. Um, the other thing, I did have a quick look at a BBC article about Queen Margaret and I quite like this. It said she's known for her smoking habits and her rejection of mobile phones. Isn't that interesting? All right, so let's take a look at the mini reports. How am I constructing these this time? Well, what we're gonna focus on is the sun's movement through Sagittarius into Capricorn. Uh, for all signs, I've really had a look. I've really stuck with sun's movement into Sagittarius more so and we'll have a look at Mars in Sagittarius. I've got here, yeah, we've got great energy here to start the year with a strong work focus. So even if you're on holiday, let's say you've scheduled a couple of weeks off. I know my friend, she's off for the next two, three weeks. Um, so she won't be so work focused, but this is good energy if you are busy working and many people do work right across this period. You know, a lot of people are working. Some, for some people, this is your busy time. So there is a strong work focus to the start of this year here. And I've got here, Venus and Mercury will enter Sagittarius across January. This is great energy for artists of all kinds. You might be feeling inspired to be more artistic with whatever you do across January, but basically there is an injection of artistic kind of energy into the start of this month. So I'll be covering that for each sign. And we'll also be checking in on the new moon and the full moon for all the mini reports as well. So if you're ready, let's go, let's begin. I'm just gonna take a little look at this weather here <laughs> because it is raining. I wonder if that's coming up on the screen. No, it's not. Well, that's okay. Let's keep going. I don't mind. I don't mind a bit of rain. It kind of reminds me of England. Okay. Oh gosh, the weather there. It's full on, isn't it? It's very, um, very rainy indeed there, I do believe. Yeah. If you're in a part of England where it's, where it's very stormy, please stay safe. Please stay well. You know, oh, I'm just gonna move my bag, so there we go. I think I'm dry though, I think I'm okay. <laughs> I 
Oh, the joys of shooting outdoors. Okay. Aries, let's begin. Let's begin this, guys. Aries. Welcome Aries, this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until the 15th of January, we've got Mars and Sun both in Sagittarius. It's a good time to skill up and get ready for what can be a very busy year for you. This could be a very busy and very productive year for you, Aries. So from 15 January onwards, the sun transits Capricorn. Again, we've got more of that work focused energy where you could even start new initiatives or new projects. 18 January onwards, Venus, Mercury and Mars are in Sagittarius, giving a burst of artistic energy to anything you're working on at this time. Now we've got a new moon in Sagittarius, Purva Ashada Nakshatra, happening on the 11th of January in your ninth house. So this is a great time to remember that you are the creator of your own experience. And we've got a full moon in Cancer, Pushya Nakshatra, happening on the 25th of January in your fourth house. So something could come full circle in your relationship with your mother. That's something to bear in mind there. Aries, it's looking like a really good start to the year for you. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're okay. Okay, Taurus. This could be Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, or Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Just sorting out my hair. Okay, until the 15th of January, we've got Sun in your eighth house. So if you do any self development work at this time, you might become very aware of some deep patterns that require change. So this could be really productive for you. If you are on a spiritual path, self-development journey, any of that, you do that kind of work that could be powerful until 15 January. Then we've got 18 January onwards. Venus, Mercury and Mars are in your eighth house, providing some artistic energy and ideas that could be used to reinvent your space or how you organize yourself this year. We've got the eighth house here. We've got the artist combina combination, Venus and Mercury. We've got Mars here. So it is quite interesting. You can, this can be as simple as clutter clearing, but this could be um, as extravagant as you designing your space in a new way or you're designing something or there's some artistry here. Maybe you're designing something. Maybe you're getting quite... Um, creative with your um, with transforming and transmuting energies as well at this time that's a possibility now we've got a new moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening on the 11th of January in your eighth house so you could gain some deep insights into the mind-body connection and how it works for you and then we've got a full moon in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra happening on the 25th of January in your third house. So this is a really social full moon. This is lovely. You might feel inspired to share the fullness of your feelings with someone. Um, equally, this could be a lovely time where you're just feeling more social. Maybe you want to be out and about a bit with friends. Taurus, it's looking like a really nice start to the month for you. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until the 15th of January, we've got Sun in your seventh house. Now, if you've been a bit tired lately, this could be why. Okay, um, Sun is going to move into the eighth house after the 15th. So it could be a little bit of a slow start to the year for you energetically is what I'm seeing here with the movement of the sun. Now, 18 January onwards, Venus, Mercury and Mars are in your seventh house, which is really good energy to help you plan future travel plans or put some extra artistry into a project that you love. Equally, if you've got a public of some kind, social media platform, maybe you're writing a book, something like that there'll be something possibly where there's more connection with you and your audience as well so that's looking quite nice there now we've got a new moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening on the 11th of January in your seventh house 
this is a great time to wish for healing in your relationship or that you be more deeply in love or more together um, or if you are single it's a great time to wish for a partner to wish to meet that special someone and we've got a full moon in cancer push your nakshatra happening on the 25th of january in your second house so this is a beautiful nourishing full moon to spend at home you can cook up something delicious and you can truly relax and unwind during this full moon if you're like me you might find that it's a little bit hard to sleep on a full moon i started observing that as i've been doing this astrology work i'm like oh yeah i, I don't sleep so well on the full moon nights but that's okay maybe some more if you just sort of gently meditate that's what i do if i'm having trouble sleeping i just kind of meditate and that's just lovely this, this will be a really nice full moon to do that if you find yourself up at night all right gemini well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome thank you so much for joining so until 15 january we've got sun in your sixth house so this is a strong placement for the sun it's winning energy this is great energy for competition legal battles of any kind um, even just your energy you might you might have energy at this time which is good physical energy now after the 15th of January the Sun moves into the seventh you might notice that your energy dips a little bit that's a possibility now 18th January onwards we've got Venus Mercury and Mars in your sixth house so this is great energy again to achieve a lot you're starting the year beautifully with all this um, lovely sixth house energy this is good energy to achieve a lot get lots of work done or you are strategically planning future moves or you know future plans projects that kind of thing so you're either using this energy this month in the now to hit the ground running achieve things nose to the grindstone all that kind of thing maybe you got that going on but equally if it's not quite that for you it might be that you're using this energy to strategically plan the year ahead you could be using it in that way mercury basically in the sixth is beautiful strategic energy so yeah that's quite nice now we've got a new moon in sagittarius purva ashada nakshatra on the 11th of january in your sixth house so this is a good time to wish for next steps in career to be shown to you and we've got a full moon in cancer pushya nakshatra on the 25th of January in your first house this is your full moon cancer so this is really a time to rest sleep well nourish yourself on every level and look out for what cycles are completing at this time and you'll be amazed I when I've observed this I have seen really big cycles complete uh, at full moon times it's pretty incredible actually what lines up so cancer it's looking like a really good month ahead for you. I'm wishing you well. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now, Leo, until the 15th of January, we've got Sun in your fifth house. This is a really good time to be taking stock of your finances and making future plans to expand your life. 18th January onwards, we've got Venus, Mercury and Mars in your fifth house, giving you both creative and romantic energy. This is really nice. Great for singles out there. Um, you might meet someone. Uh, it's a time, a great time for love or if you have children, it's a great time to take them out and enjoy time with them. Now we've got a new moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening on the 11th of January in your fifth house. This is a great time to wish for new creative ideas or maybe you know if your partnered up and you wish to be pregnant or something like that you could be wishing for a baby. Equally <clears throat> this could be a time where you're more fertile than normal so you might just want to take care that kind of thing. Um, now there's a full moon happening cancer push your nakshatra on the 25th of January in your 12th house 
So this is a beautiful full moon that could be full of emotional and spiritual realizations. This could be really profound. So if you do keep a dream journal or any of that, there's a really great time to note your dreams uh, and see if you can get any aha moments. You know, sometimes our dreams really do have extraordinary um, symbolism and messages for us uh, that, can, that can really help us in our daily lives. Leo, it's looking like a really nice month ahead for you. Great way to start the year. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until the 15th of January, Sun is in your fourth house. So your expenses could be higher than usual, especially house related expenses. That is a possibility. Now from 18th January onwards, we've got Venus, Mercury and Mars in your fourth house inspiring all kinds of home improvement or interior design ideas. It's a good time to make home improvements, but with, with Mars in the fourth, it's not actually an ideal time to move. And in fact, you've got sun in your fourth house as well. So yeah, if you have to move this month, you can move, but just plan buffer time, realize that some things might cost a bit extra. It could be a bit inconvenient, that kind of thing. Um, if you can move, the month after that would be even better or the coming months after that would be even better now there's a new moon Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening on the 11th of January in your fourth house so it's a really good time to wish for your dream home to become a reality uh, if you're like me and you watch those I watch what is it it's called the luxury home show it's so beautiful some of the things there. but you know some of them are too big and I watch them and I think oh would I really want to live there many of them I wouldn't want to because they're just too big anyway um, then we've got a full moon but, but I'm saying you can wish for your dream home basically or if you want to move or if you want to upgrade your house or whatever it is maybe you want a new kitchen I don't know but that's on the 11th of January now on the 25th of January we've got a full moon Cancer, Pushya Nakshatra. So as I said, the 25th of January, happening in your 11th house. Oh, this is so lovely. This is a beautiful full moon that could be really quite social for you. It could contain some element of wish fulfillment. Um, could even be a little bit romantic. You've got Venus and Mars opposite. So that's a really, really nice social full moon there for you, Virgo. Uh, and in Cancer, Pushya Nakshatra. I love that energy. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until the 15th of January, you've got the sun in your third house. This is beautiful, confident, radiant energy that you can use to excel or kickstart the year on a high note. Got some confirmation from the birds there, so that's always good. Now, 18 January onwards, we've got Venus, Mercury and Mars in your third house. Again, this is providing artistic energy and inspiration that you can capture and share through your work or simply put in a plan to execute at a later date so sometimes when you're inspired you've got ideas sometimes you can't execute that thing straight away try to write it down try to capture it try to have some kind of ideas notebook um, I've got a couple of those and yeah sometimes I do forget to write things down but as much as possible I do jot things down and then I refer to them later and I bring them out and it's all good so yeah this could be a, a real month where you're capturing some great ideas. So make sure you've got a little note, notebook with you. Now we've got a new moon, Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra, happening on the 11th of January in your third house. So this is a great time to wish for more of your soul tribe people to find you or for you to find them, them to find you, however it works. But basically, this is a good time to wish for new friendships more suitable friendships um, to come in and it doesn't mean that like 
the old friendships you don't see them maybe you do but you want people who are more suited to where you're going in life kind of thing so that that could come into you there then we've got the full moon cancer push your nakshatra full moon's happening on the 25th of january in your 10th house so this is a really beautiful full moon where some cycles at work or in your career could come to a close this could be the time where a major project finishes or perhaps you're finished with something at work or you 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 have this realization that you know i'm ready for the next level now i'm ready for for more responsibility or the next thing or you know i want to create something different going forward libra it's looking like a really good month ahead we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until the 15th of January, we've got the Sun in your second house. So this could be indicating expenses are a little bit on the high side for you at the moment. So just take care of that if that's the case. Now, 18 January onwards, you will have better transits later to make the money, so don't worry. It often happens that expenses are high, especially around Christmas and January, that's pretty typical. So 18 January onwards, Venus, Mercury and Mars are in your second house, making you quite home focused. There are some really lovely artistic energies here that could be put into action. And this could be something really simple because you're at home more possibly with all this sort of second house energy it could be just you making a beautiful uh, new dish you're trying something new or maybe you're making something that improves your home or you are um, but you could be making something that would be a really nice way to channel this energy all right, we do have Mars in the second, so if things are tense at home and there are fights and arguments and stuff like that, you might want to lay low a little bit. You might want to um, not speak up too much or across this mother or definitely think a lot before you speak kind of thing. It's good to express yourself. Um, but uh, we've got the artist combination in your second house, so you could be expressing yourself through art. You could be channeling that difficult energy into some form of creativity maybe you're writing a song or a screenplay or something I don't know but you're channeling this energy in a creative or artistic way now there's a new moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening on the 11th of January in your second house so this is a time to wish for a great fortune to materialize in your life then that is because we've got Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra Sagittarius of course fortune um, I mean, I was going to write something like, you know, time to wish for the big money because that's what I usually write. But I thought, no, let's use the word fortune because that's Sagittarius there. And of course, the Indian concept of fortune isn't just money. You know, it's love, it's health, it's... Um, and that's, it's, that's very Eastern. Eastern, Indian, Chinese, this kind of thing, prosperity. I know with um, in Chinese culture, it's more about prosperity, isn't it? So yeah, it's not just money. <laughs> now we've got a full moon for you, Scorpio, in Cancer, Pushya Nakshatra, happening on the 25th of January in your ninth house. So something could close out in a relationship with your father, or it could be a realization that you have in connection with your father, maybe, um, you know, as we mature, it can be the kind of thing that, you know, father figure is someone you look up to or you admire or is hero or this kind of role but as you age and mature you start to see wow you know that's when we grow out of these notions of like parents being god or perfect or any of that and we, we see them as everyday people and you start to see wow they're human being like me and then well they're flawed and you know and, the, and through that maturing process you you start to go beyond and you start to take up more leadership of your own life and your own journey so that could be happening for you uh, with this full moon you could be coming up to some realizations where you start to see wow you know at, or if you had a bad bad time with your father if father was not a good figure in your life 
then you start to mature and you start to see, wow, he had, you know, it was tough for him. And you start to develop compassion. Uh, that's definitely the spiritual path, you know. More compassion, more ease, more flow will come into your life. So yeah, something could close out. I've got here in relationship with your father or family in general as well. You can realize how much personal power you have at this time. And this could be a, we've got cancer pushing a kshatra here. This could be a beautiful, compassionate, uh, healing, lovely full moon. And you feeling the compassion for the family members could do um, a lot of good for you and for your whole family as well. Scorpio, it's looking like a good month ahead. I'm wishing you well. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until 15th January, the Sun is in your first house. Now, for some of you, this could be invigorating. If you're a Sun person, you love the Sun. Um, yeah, it could be really good, but equally, for some of you, it could be tiring. And I've had that in reality like when I did the last video and I was sitting in the Sun and honestly by the end of that video I was sweating I was so hot it was boiling hot and um, but great actually I found it very enlivening and invigorating whereas I've had times where the strong Aussie, Aussie Sun can knock me out and it can give me a headache and it can be oh it can be way too much so I know what it is for the Sun to be energizing for the physical body but I know what it is to be depleting as well I've had both now on 18 January onwards Venus Mercury and Mars are in your first house giving you a beautiful burst of artistic energy that you can use to build up the next steps in your life or your career or what you want to do this is this could be quite profound especially since we're at the start of a new year and you know we are looking ahead we are making plans for the future at this time now there's a new moon sagittarius purva ashada nakshatra happening on the 11th of january in your first house so this could be a time to wish for all the things that are going to help you to expand your life purpose or all the things you need to help expand in life there's a real sort of expansion focus here and it's all about you this is about you and your life what are all the things think about all the things that you'd love to have to expand and that could be time it could be money it could be physical objects it could be you want new camera gear it could be whatever it is I don't know what it is but what are all the things that you need to expand your life wish for those things on the 11th of January and then we've got a full moon in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra happening on the 25th of January in your 8th house. So something could come full circle either in your marriage or with your family or with your in-laws. And it's a really lovely full moon to nourish yourself and others uh, at this time. This is a good sort of at-home full moon, cook up something delicious, rest and relax, all that type of thing. Sagittarius it's looking like a good month ahead we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome I'm just going to check the time I think we're okay <sighs> it's raining again I'm just looking at it sort of stopped at Leo the rain stopped and now it's starting again I don't know if you can tell you can't really tell maybe I'll try and pan the camera around and show you yeah quite nice I'm sheltered amazingly so that's why I have stayed here otherwise I think you're moving all right Capricorn let's get in so this is Capricorn did I mention it's Capricorn ascendant Capricorn moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so until the 15th of January you've got Sun in your 12th house so this can be spiritually illuminating you could get some insights at this time equally the Sun in this place could make it hard to sleep at night so that's just something to bear in mind it will pass it's it's only until the 15th January so you'll be fine now 18 January onwards we've got Venus Mercury and Mars in your 12th house giving you a burst of artistic energy that you can use to escape the everyday I love this 
Um, and I've got here, even though it's the start of the new year, you, you do have some time here to relax or escape in January. So some of you have got your holidays booked for this month, in which case this is perfect. But if you are working, keep working. But maybe there'll be some time that you can steal away for yourself. Um, maybe, you know, you'll have a Saturday or a Sunday where you can just do something that has an escapist quality to it. That would be really nice this month. And I've got here, your busy times will come later on. So if this month is not feeling too busy, don't worry. It'll, it'll happen for you. Now there's a new moon, Sagittarius, Purva Ashada Nakshatra, happening on the 11th of January in your 12th house. So this is a really good time to wish for your awareness power, the power of your awareness, to be stronger than the mind. I've been doing this work, just generally anyway, I've been reading and rereading Lester Levinson's chapter in Happiness is Free. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, and the chapter is called Mind. I'm pretty sure it's just called Mind something like that and he's talking about how yeah when our awareness power is or our identification with our awareness is stronger than our identification with the mind then it's like um, the universe is creating through you and I love this kind of concept so you might really feel this a little bit here on the 11th of January or if you're doing this work too then you might find uh, that your awareness is strong and powerful at this time. Now there's a full moon happening in Cancer, Pushya Nakshatra on the 25th of January in your seventh house. So something could come full circle in your marriage, some dynamic or pattern could complete in your marriage or your significant committed partnership. There could be some new realization that dawns on you regarding love you might something that bothered you before might not bother you uh, this could be the kind of full moon where just something closes out it could be healing in nature and you could feel really good and you know sometimes when we're in a partnership we have this thing that like oh you know it's their fault or if i just get rid of them it'll all be better but no that that's not how it works actually because they are me they are in us I am in them. I know this is all very roomy. We've gone into roomy territory here, Capricorn. Someone needs this. This is all off the cuff. Um, but here we go. Someone may need some of this. And, and look, the thing is, whether the person's there or not, it doesn't matter. It's how, how you feel in yourself. And you can feel free in yourself, whether that other person is there or not. Okay, so people come and go naturally. That happens. That's all good. But I don't know, I just feel like there's some Capricorn here that might need this. Uh, and if that's you, I'm, I'm wishing you well. But you know, I, you're doing some high level spiritual work here, Capricorn. Capricorn. You're at the end of your Sadisati if you're a Capricorn moon. So you're doing great. And um, hang in there, keep going. You've got a nice start to the year. I'm liking what you've got here. It looks really good. All right, Capricorn, I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon, or Aquarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until the 15th of January, you've got the Sun in your 11th house. We've got rather loud bird. Hello, bird. Do you know, I had to stop this video a couple of times because we had all these cockatoos, like a bunch of them absolutely screaming their lungs out it was just i might i don't know maybe i'll keep that intro in i don't know it was pretty wild anyway uh so you got the sun in your 11th house we've got birds cranking up saying this is good so got him make the most of this energy yeah this is good energy it's great for being seen listened to understood i hear you birds we all hear you birds the birds are loud aren't they for you but this is, it's all about being seen, listened to and understood. If you speak, people are gonna listen. It's really good for your social media platforms if you have them. Uh, if you're an author, you have an audience, any of that, it's a good time for strong connection with your audience. Now, 18 January onwards, Venus, Mercury and Mars are in your 11th house, giving you a burst of artistic energy 
that can help you build so many elements in your life. This energy is great for building new relationships, starting new projects, being creative in whatever domain appeals to you. You've got really good creative energy here, Aquarius. Definitely use that. Now there's new moon, Sagittarius, Purva Ashada Nakshatra, happening on the 11th of January in your 11th house. So this is a time to wish for new opportunities to manifest in your life. If you want to wish for that next step up to manifest in your life, you can definitely do that. Or that something changes in your life so that you can take on more new opportunities, bigger opportunities, so that you can sort of facilitate yeah, bigger things in your life. This is a platform sort of a house. 11th house yeah so that is you could wish for that next platform up <laughs> I hope that comes up on the audio I think it's a cockatoo it sounds like a cockatoo I saw crows and cockatoos earlier anyway we've got a full moon happening in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra on the 25th of January in your sixth house so something could complete at work, something could complete regarding a legal case, um, something could complete regarding competition, how you compete. Maybe you stop worrying about the competition, maybe something like that happens. Um, or it could be something to do with your client base. If you are um, a consulting professional or something like that, you have clients, that kind of thing. Aquarius. It's looking like a really good start to the year for you. I'm gonna wish you well. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm checking the time. Oh, we're okay. The camera's gonna cut out at some point, but that's all right. Pisces, this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So until the 15th of January, we've got the sun in your 10th house. So this sun energy is offering a really strong start to career and your work. So if you are motivated, if you are ready to dive into career and do all of that, this is really good energy for you. Now, 18 January onwards, we've got Venus, Mercury and Mars in your 10th house, providing a burst of artistic energy that can really help you in your career. I've got here, and if you're not working, it can help you find or create a career path that you love. So for any of you who aren't working at the moment, uh, as I say, any of you who aren't working at the moment, let's say, and let, well, let's take the case of you're on a holiday. Okay, you got a little bit of a holiday, so you're not really work focused. Because I know some of my friends, they've got two, three weeks off at this time. So yeah, I mean, we've got all this work energy here. You could just be using that to contemplate and strategize what you'd like to achieve for work this year. So if you're on that kind of two to three week holiday, you've got that kind of energy where you can strategize work, career, projects, what would you like to achieve? You can look at that. Now, if you're not working and you are looking for work, you haven't got work, this energy that we have here, this can really help you create a career path that you love. We've got artistic energy here. We've got Venus and Mercury. We've got Mars here. Mars wants to do something. So it's like, look at your career path. Well, you could actually, you could look at your career path like a work of art. You could look at your life as a work of art. I, I often do this. I look at my whole life as a work of art. You know, I, I do that. Um, but you could look at just at your career path as a work of art and see, step back and sort of see, do I like this? Am I excited am I challenged by what I do am I growing am I learning that's what you want you want a career path where you know they say and that's what they say they say that you're you could be at the bottom um, of a ladder you want to climb that's preferable to being halfway up a ladder that you're not very keen to climb or you're a bit meh, like I don't want to climb that but oh okay but being at the bottom of a ladder you really want to climb, that's far more exciting. So have a think about that kind of concept uh, across this month. That might apply to some of you. I've got here, um, if you're retired, you might find that this energy gets you out and about more. So sometimes with 10th house energy, if you're not working, if you're retired, 
um, it could be that you know this energy gets you out and about more it gets you creative it gets you indulging in hobbies and passion projects and things that you absolutely love I've got here this is simply good energy to participate in life in a broader sense now we've got a new moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening on the 11th of January in your 10th house so it's a time to wish for next steps in career to be easily shown to you definitely you can wish for um, growth to be guided you know that the next steps come to you easily and then we've got a full moon cancer pushya nakshatra happening on the 25th of january in your fifth house so a cycle could close out in your creativity uh, for example you might finish a major project or something like that it could also be a cycle that closes out with your children or in your relationship with your children you know maybe you're acknowledging with your kids wow they've quite grown up I don't need to do as much as I you know was always doing right it could be that kind of realization or, or something where you you realize yeah wow my kids are my kids can do it on their own you know give them more a bit more power Pisces I'm wishing you well it's it's looking like a really nice start to the year here for you and stay tuned on the channel I've got new things coming up we're gonna I'm gonna keep recording outdoors I'm liking this I've needed some outdoor energy because um well yeah I was kind of quite stuck indoors across last year so each time we'll come to the university and I'll, I'll show you around and I'm, I want to go to a couple of beaches here and there we'll see we'll see how I go for time uh, I am doing sessions again so that does keep me busy at my desk and indoors and, and things like that but stay tuned to the channel everyone I want to thank you all so much for watching uh, I want to thank you for subscribing for liking for commenting all of that and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.